Well, not a great start to this channel. It doesn't surprise me Im immensely. Uh, based on my experience with website tutorials, I've had tutorials online for about 11 years now and they haven't received much interest either. It surprises me that so many people visit Thailand each year as tourists and so many foreigners live in Thailand permanently that there's uh, so little interest, but that's the way it is. I've met a number of foreigners in the past who I've worked with and they just, they've just told me outright that they've got no interest in, in the spoken language or the written language. It could be me as well. Um, I don't find YouTube to be ideal as a teaching medium because of the one-way nature of YouTube. I like students in a classroom so that they can ask me questions and I can look at their faces to see if they, they really understand or not. It also takes quite a lot of planning for these videos. Uh, we're in, a, in a classroom you can sort of wing it because you can get feedback from the students and, and lessons can go different ways, but here there's no feedback so there's more, more planning involved. It could also just be that people think it's too difficult and the, they think that the, the difficulty of learning to read Thai outweighs the benefits of being able to read Thai. Regarding the difficulty, it's now February and at the end of February is the end of the Thai school year. So all the Thai students are busy swatting up for their end of year exams, including my two kids. I've got a son who's five, who's in um, Anuban 2 level. And his Thai is far more advanced than I'm doing. He knows all of the Thai consonants, all of the Thai vowels, all of the Thai tone marks, all of the, all of the Thai numerals, and the English alphabet, which is a second language to him. And what, we're, what I'm doing in this tutorial is this sort of Anuban 1 level, which is for three or four year old kids, so it's really not that difficult. Regarding the benefits, it's difficult to explain sometimes what the benefits are, but what I thought I'd do today is just have, have a wander around the streets and there's so much information that's there on signs that you just, if you don't, if you can't read Thai, you just walk past it. When I, when I got married and we were looking for a house to rent, that was how I found my, my house. There was a, a sign just attached to a, a lamppost. And this is what tyres do. They, they don't use um, classified commercials in newspapers. They just print out a sheet of paper and then put it on lampposts. So you just, you just find so much information that otherwise you, you'd miss. So let's do that. I'm on my own, I've got no assistant, so when, when, I, when I read something, I'll prob probably get the tones wrong. But don't, don't worry, don't, don't pay much attention to it. And with me, reading Thai was for pragmatic reasons. So I, personally, I don't really care about not getting the tones right. All I, all I want is information from science, and that's what I get. So let, let's do that. This sort of thing is absolutely typical for Thailand. When Thais want to advertise something, I don't use the classified newspaper. They just print out the advert and go and stick them, stick them on lampposts and electricity poles all around town. This is how I found the rented house we lived in after we got married. So what have we got here? The first one, Rapsamak Duan. Okay, so they're accepting applications and they're, they're doing it urgently. Merban, they want a maid. And below that, Tum Kwam Sa'at, it's okay, to do cleaning. Kong Lang Jan, they want someone to wash dishes. Hong Ahan Glang Kun, Glang Kun, night time. Hong Ahan is a food shop. Tum Ngang, my Rong Ram, Hat Yai. So Rong Ram is hotel in Hat Yai, so this is in a hotel. Let's go down this little bit. And what do we see next? Hong Chow. Hong is room and Chow is rent. So if you want to rent a room, and it's got the location just underneath that. Trong Kam uh, Wittialai Technology Hat Yai. So it's just opposite the technical college in Hat Yai. Okay, let's go down a bit more. Okay, one at the bottom. 
rock rap jang. This is uh, vehicles for hire. For hire. So gaba is a pickup truck. Hoklo six wheels. So they've got pickup trucks. They've got vehicles with six wheels, which are quite large. Yai ban move house. So if you're moving house, you can use it. Pasado parcels. If you're sending parcels, you can use it. So as I say, this is really typical for, for Thailand and, and if you can't read, you're just going to walk past this stuff. But if you're looking for a particular product or a particular service, they might be advertising just the thing you need and you don't even know it's there. So it's really useful to be able to read. Being able to read Thai also saves you money. This is one of my favourite food shops in, in Thailand where I live. I've been coming here for about 16 years. It's run by a, a family, uh, the two sons, a daughter, mother and a father, and they'll take it in terms of cooking. Now, in restaurants in tourist areas, they'll either have a menu in English, or there'll be like a picture menu, so you can just look at pictures. In here, nothing like this. The menu is up here on the wall. Okay, so the right, right gun, aha, and that's a list of food. First one on the menu, kalp, kalpap fried rice, then we got pad prik, which is a type of curry, pad krapal, this is the um, uh, curry with sweet basil leaves, which I've just ordered, kru and gang, another type of curry, prik pal, prik thai dum, that's um, chilies and pepper, uh, pongari, which is um, curry powder, etc, etc. So, if you can't read Thai, it's actually very difficult using these places. So there's no English menu, there's no picture menu, the people in, in the restaurant probably can't speak English, and if you use these places, you'll save money. There's another, another quite interesting um, story. I went to Bangkok last year with my daughter, and we went to Jatulchuk, Jatulchuk Market, which is quite famous in Bangkok. And there's a food centre there. And the menu is Thai on one side and English on the other side. The dishes are basically the same, but on the Thai side, all the prices are cheaper. <laughs> so, but if you read it in English, you've got to pay more money. So there's a, an automatic tax for English reading people, which, which Thais don't get. Okay, so I'm gonna have my lunch now and then we're gonna move on to somewhere else. Here's one for the ladies, and this is a beauty salon. So I'm so I, so I'm to increase, so I'm beautiful, I like to increase beauty. It's run by a lady called Lek, and the shop is called Lek Beauty. Rap Borigan, these are the services that she offers. Um, so sat, sat dry, so sat, sat palm is to wash hair. Tires have different words for wash, depending on what you're washing. Just now we saw a, a poster, um, they were asking for someone to wash dishes and that if it's dishes, they use the word lang, lang, lang jang. If it's hair, they use sat. And dry is like to blow dry. Op ein arm is to steam hair. Uh, tat, tat pom to cut hair. Yut pom to stretch hair. Tam si pom is to color hair. Teng na rap. This is um, doing makeup for graduation ceremonies. This is doing makeup for weddings. In Thailand, there are lots of uh, lady boys, and um, makeup artist is a very popular profession for them. Uh, a lady boy did my wife's hair for, for our wedding. Cut na. Cut is like to scrape. So scraping faces, but I'm not, I'm not quite sure what they scrape your face with. And nuatna, like massage your face. So it's not another good example. You might, you know, if you're a, a, a woman in Thailand, you're looking for a, a beauty salon. And you might, you see a sign like this, you can't read anything, you just walk straight past. But it's, the information's all there if you can read Thai. Here we have another lamppost. And wherever you have a lamppost in Thailand, you have advertisements. So we have another one for um, vehicles for hire. Above that, we've got Lang Air Ro Yon. So if um, you have a problem with your air conditioning in your car, there's a service here. 
There's another one for vehicles for hire, and below that we've got to tan, which is like blocked pipes, and suom tan. I think suom is um, like a septic septic tank. So if you've got problems with your plumbing at home, these people can help. The other thing that reading Thai is useful for is transport. Uh, if you're in Thailand and you want to go somewhere as a foreigner, there's always a helpful Thai taxi driver who is willing to give you a special price. The special price being twice as much as the Thai price. If you can read Thai, you can find lots of cheaper options to get around. This thing here is called a song tell. Song is the Thai word for two, and tell is roll. There are two rows of seats in the back. Now, for some reason, expats in Putty are called these Bart buses, but they're not called Bart buses anywhere else in Thailand. For one thing, they cost more than a Bart, and two, in Thailand, what other currency are you going to pay apart from Bart? So, you need to know where they're going and where the, the route is written on the side in Thai. If you don't know, you can just keep asking people. If you do know how to read Thai, you can just see for yourself. So this one's going to Ratapum, which I've been to before, Nikom, which I don't know, Chalung, which I think is near the Malaysian border, Hure, which I don't know, Kuan Lung is actually where I live, and then Hat Yai. So it's just one more benefit of being able to read Thai. Now that I'm married with a house, we do our own laundry. But when I was single living in an apartment, I, I never did my own laundry. So I had to find laundry shops. And this is a very common sign in, in Thai. It's Sak Op Rit, which is basically um, laundry and ironing service. And below that it says Kruang Sak and Kruang Op. So they've, they've got washers and dryers. And um, yot, yot Rian are coin operated washing machines. So it's just, this one here is just another useful sign to know. Many foreigners in Thailand choose to ride motorbikes. They're cheap and easy to get around with. If your motorbike gets a puncture, you need to get it fixed. This is a sign you need to look for. Bayang. It's quite amazing in Thailand that virtually 24 hours a day you can get a puncture repaired and when you do so the guy works quite hard and normally charges 30 baht so it's a, a real bargain this is this is a sign for puncture repairs parking in Thailand as is the case in most parts of the world is a problem and you have to be a bit careful where you park this is a private car park for a hotel and there's a sign outside which is only in Thai and it says Regency. So this, this car park is only for customers of the Regency Hotel. La Putima Teto Borisat Taunan. So and for, for people who come to do work here. Bukon Pinok Jot Jot Kit Songroy Bat Shuamong. So people from outside who, who park here, who are not customers of the hotel have to pay 200 baht per hour. Now, if, you're, if you can't read Thai and you, you park in here, you might have a bit of a shock when you come back to get your car and you get quite a big bill. Okay, we're in another, another Thai restaurant and the menu is slightly different. This one sells cow, car mu. So cow is rice and car is leg and mu is pig, pork. So, Pig leg on rice and cow man guy ban. Cow cow man is like rice with chicken fat added, and guy ban is like a free range chicken. If you go to somewhere that's closed and you want to know when it's open, this is another good reason to be able to read Thai because most of the time the times are only in Thai. So here we have a sign, but tam gan, okay, it's the op opening times. Jam Tung Sao, so Monday to Saturday, 8.30 to um, 7 in the evening. You took one at it, so it's shut every Sunday. Thais have different words for the same thing, 
and the same word for different things. A little while ago we saw a help wanted sign for clean, uh, washing dishes and when Thais wash dishes they used the word lang for wash. When we moved on to the sign for a beauty salon the word to wash hair is sat so washing different things has, has a different word. This sign is outside a photographic shop and they, they offer a service to develop film and the Thai word to develop film is lang, the same as wash dishes. So rap, rap lang scan film, so they develop and scan film. Kai film si kao dam, they also sell black and white film. I'm very interested in photography and this, this sign is of, is of interest to me and I do actually use this shop. I could do this all day but you've probably got the point by now. Is it necessary to be able to read Thai in Thailand? No, not at all. Many expats have lived here for 20 or 30 years, can't read Thai and they don't have any problems. But as you've seen today, there is an enormous amount of information that's written everywhere you go in Thailand. And to me it's almost as if, if you can't read, you walk around with one eye closed. You just miss out on so much information. So I think it's a really useful thing to be able to do. You just need to be realistic about the amount of effort and the amount of time it takes. It does take effort and you're not going to do it just by watching YouTube videos. That's, that's the lazy man's way. Uh, and it does take time. You need to be wary of the, the clickbait on YouTube. I've seen videos claiming that you can learn all the Thai consonants in one hour. I think one video even says 15 minutes. It's just nonsense. To, to get up to the kind of level I've demonstrated today will take about three to six months realistically. But, but, but it can be done. Uh, when I was teaching, I, I used to teach my students proverbs and one was that no, nothing worthwhile having in life comes easily. So it takes some effort, but in the end it, it's worthwhile. So just keep on watching the videos. I'm, I'm doing these at a slow pace. We're doing small steps, but eventually it will lead up to something big. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and I'll get back to you.